In the previous lectures, I have already discussed about the C string library functions. And now in this presentation, I will discuss array of strings. So let's get started. Suppose I went to a grocery store and I want to buy some fruits. Suppose I bought two pineapples, maybe three apples and three bananas. And I want to store this information somewhere. I can store them as strings, right? If I bought two pineapples, then I can store that as a string. I can store that string particularly in a variable. That is possible, right? But it is not possible to store all that information in a single variable. I want some other alternative, of course. If I want to store all this information, I can use a two-dimensional array which can accommodate all the strings. If I bought two oranges, then I can store that information within this two-dimensional array. Similarly, if I want to store all this information, then two-dimensional array could be a good alternative, right? Now, let me pictorially represent this two-dimensional array. Here's how I can represent this two-dimensional array. We have basically four rows and 12 columns. We have to specify here the 12 columns because this is the notation which is followed in two-dimensional array. Here we have to specify the size of the columns. Now, how many columns you want, you have to specify here. There is no problem if you won't specify the number of rows, but we have to specify the number of columns. That is why I have mentioned here 12. I keep this size 12 according to my requirement. I can see here one pineapple string is actually the largest string, right? So according to that, I have set the size, okay? For this purpose, you must have a prior knowledge about what items you have actually bought. So that is a disadvantage here, of course. But let's see first that how the information is stored. Here we can see two oranges, two apples, three bananas, and one pineapple information is easily stored in this fruits array. But there is a drawback of this two-dimensional array. Here we can see the lot of memory is simply getting wasted. We don't want these null characters at this position. But because of pre-specifying the size here, lot of memory is simply getting wasted. We want these null characters at the end of the string, only one null character, not these many null characters at all. To avoid such wastage, we do have an alternative. We don't have to worry. Here is an alternative. We can create an array of pointers. Instead of having a two-dimensional array of characters, we can have a single dimensional array of pointers. We know that when we are storing a string literal, actually it is not the string literal which is getting stored. It is the pointer to the first character of that literal which is getting stored, right? So when I mention two oranges here in a string form, it is actually a string literal and it means that only the pointer to the first character is getting stored. So I can replace this by some pointer, which is a pointer to a character, right? So two oranges here, this string is equivalent to some pointer to the first character of this string, okay? And this is also applicable to the rest of the strings. So actually we have a one-dimensional array of pointers. Okay. Now here is how it can be represented. We have this one-dimensional array which consists of all the pointers to the first character of the string literals. Right. So here in this first block, the pointer to the first character of this string, two oranges, is stored. Similarly, in this block, the pointer to the first character of the string, two apples, is stored, right? And here we can see that there is no memory wastage at all, right? This concept is very easy to understand. There is no need to maintain a two-dimensional array where we have to specify the number of columns. There is no requirement of specifying the number of columns at all. We do have an alternative, which is an array of pointers, right? So we can see the advantage of these pointers, right? They are very useful. Okay, now let's consider one homework problem. What is the output of the following C program? You have to determine the output of the C program. And as usual, when you get the answer, just put that answer in the comment section below. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.